<coughs> organized mind shop. That's all analytical is. Again, everybody learns differently, so I, I want to, you know, I don't want to overstate the case, but I urge you, if you have anything that's entitled logic games, burn it or give it to somebody you don't like. You know, I mean, I just, it, it, again, I can't say for sure it might not help on the fringes or something, uh, I, I, but I do think even if it helped on the fringes, you'd be missing a wonderful opportunity to actually use analytical to prepare for the stuff in law school that's based on analytical reasoning. And there's lots that's based on analytical reasoning. So, again, the purpose of the test is to maintain this correlation. So this section has to assist in that or it wouldn't be there. And does it kind of make sense if it tested for this, would that kind of make sense? In other words, in law school, do you think you're going to be rewarded if you organize, manage, and solve? Yes. That makes sense. But talk to me, because again, I just think people just, they're trying to make this test something it's not. Like, how much formal logic do you think you get in law school? About none. You know, so, I, I mean, the connection, if you're trying to connect formal logic to law school, it's a way, way more tenuous connection than if you're connecting, oh, no, you mean you want me to organize, manage, and then solve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's what it's doing. So what I want to do today is we're not going to really spend much time on the solving part. The solving is the effect. You solve more or less well, you know, based on how well you've organized and how well you've managed. If you organize well and you manage well, what the heck? You'll solve well. Um, and, and so what I want you to do is, is, this is the swing, right? I just want you to get the swing. But you're going to go into analytical and you're just going to say organize, manage, and stuff. That's what. And if you can't organize it, you're probably not going to manage it. And if you can't manage it, you're probably not going to solve it. So you're saying, okay, what's my plan? Am I doing four of these? Am I doing four of these? Am I doing three of these? Am I doing one of these? Well, you're not doing one. Uh, and what I mean by these words to organize for most of us means can I draw the damn thing? That's all. For someone who's going to perform well in analytical, so the person who's going to get 21 or 22 in, in 35 minutes, right? person's just a freak, right? No, they're a gifted freak, but they're a freak. And, and that person is not doing a ton of drawing because there isn't time to do any kind of elaborate drawing. You can't, you got 35 minutes, you know? So if you have to really flesh something out so that it becomes visual, well, that takes time, right? I have to flesh things out, so I, 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 I you know, that's what I have to do. And if I tried to do this all in my head, um, I'm, I'm quite certain my score would go way down. I'm quite certain. Okay. So, the more efficiently you do this, and the less time you use to do it, the higher score is going to go. And by, again, by and by, when you come into torts and you come into criminal procedure, and uh, Conflict. There's just a bunch of classes in law school where you just do tons of drawing. You're following multiple variables uh, through multiple channels to an outcome that is deductive. So this is deductive. It's not math. Right? If they had math on the L side, I wouldn't be standing here. But, but it's true. I mean, if, had, if math was on the L side, I would not be standing here. Because I don't know any math. But I am standing here, so it must be that this section, though it is deductive, and it is deductive, does not test or require you to have any uh, fluency in math, because I have none. Okay. So, 
if we start at, uh, we'll simply we'll just take it from the beginning, right? So if you just open up the book to the beginning, right? Exam 62, and all you're saying. Exam 62, the first exam. And this is section three. So we want to start thinking about a number of things here. Again, first premise, right? This is all the same. Nothing, nothing. You're, you're required to draw based on. There, there are three ways, but there are two dominant ways, right? One way they're saying is, is um, you have to be able to schedule witnesses. You know, you have to be able to schedule phone calls. I mean, it's like dopey. It's like, you know, some of the stuff about being lawyers, well, just about everybody does it, right? So, I mean, if, if you're an administrative assistant and, and you're unable to schedule time, well, you're not going to be an administrative assistant very long. Uh, so this is not, again, it's not formal logic. It is, can you schedule witnesses to come in? Well, if you're scheduling, you use the word schedule, then we're, we're looking from left to right. So if I say schedule, you probably see, if I say Monday on the left, then you're gonna see Sunday anchored on the right, all right? Um, if I say, so the word schedule evokes an image. Just that word evokes this image. If I say sequence, and I say one, three, five, seven, everybody's gonna say nine, right? It evokes an image. The word sequence evokes an image. Schedule evokes an image. The word consecutive evokes an image, right? That's, that's consecutive, I mean, these, these two guys are gonna be consecutive, right? One after another evokes an image, so the writer's language, the words the writer chooses to use, is going to evoke an image in the reader's mind. Okay, and it's just always the same. So one of the images, and the most common image, will be whatever word you want to use for this. You want to call it linear, whatever. I don't care what word you do, that's the image. All right? And you say, well, how, when does that image come to mind? Well, it comes to mind when certain words are used. And, uh, and I can draw that. Now, there's a second type of, there, there are words that produce an image that bears similarities, but is different. So here I have consecutive, one at a time, sequence, schedule, a bunch of words. Right? And then I'm going from left to right, and it may be numeric, it may be you know, uh, one through six, it may be Monday through Saturday, and that, in that event, you're being tested on your ability to manage information in a linear fashion. Okay. There's a second way, which is, I may be bringing, uh, I may be scheduling witnesses to come into the office. Okay, and then I'm looking at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, typically, you know. Um, and I may be looking at times. I may have people coming in at 11 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Okay. But I also may be calling in people who belong to different groups. Meaning, uh, if I'm trying a case, I don't want my civilians coming in on the same day as my police witnesses. I want to get my police, I want to get the police guys in there, gals in there. Uh, and I want them to say, all well, come in on Tuesday. But now I'm saying I'm concerned about the member of the group to which you belong. So that concept is different. So let's say, to say if, if, if we have six tourists and they're visiting three different cities. So you're reading this, right? It says you have these six tourists, right? And they're visiting three different cities. Well, I'm seeing this. 
Now, I don't know how many visit each city, but this doesn't mean the sequence is one, two, and three. Well, unless you tell me that, right? This no, is not indicating a sequence. It's just saying, okay, so this is uh, Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. Okay, and you got six people, right? So the way my mind works is, okay, I'm gonna drop them in here. So if you say to me, uh, uh, Taurus L goes to uh, Montreal, then I can just drop the Taurus L in there. So that's not linear, right? Um, if you say to me, there are three debate teams and there are six debaters, well then don't, then this comes to mind, right? There's the, word, the team I'm putting down here. Whereas my mind sees if you're talking about the team, team goes on the bottom, right? And the debaters then will be assigned to a team, right? If the tourists are visiting cities, the cities are on the bottom, and then the tourists are visiting cities. Uh, if, if we're talking about a, a bicycle and bicycle riders, oh, well, okay, so if you give me three bicycles and six riders, I'm putting the rider on the bike. I mean, that's the way my mind works, so it's just, okay. But that's not order. That's whatever word you want to use. So if you want to use attribution or you want to use the word assignment, I don't care what word you use, but I'm saying visually this is different, right? This is no longer one, two, three, right? The no order has not been implicated yet, right? So that's not unlikely that all four of your hypotheticals will fall into this category. And sometimes they do both, a lot of times they do both. So a lot of times, you'll have both functions. You'll be both, there'll be an order given to you, and then you'll be assigning them to a particular place or thing, okay? So, and again, there's one other, we're not gonna to touch on it right now, but there's one other way that they can require you to draw, but we don't need to do that right now. So now, let's say you open up exam 62, right? And again, the difference here is to organize, all that means is I can draw. Can I draw? We'll, we'll get into what manage means. But let's look at, if we were presented with uh, questions one through six on exam 62, we'll see if we can draw this and see how much formal logic we need to draw. A motel operator scheduling appointments to start up services at a new motel. There are appointments for six services. GLP, STW. GLP, STW. Okay, that's what I have to follow. Those are essentially my six witnesses. Now they're applying, uh, I'm sorry, appointments for six services will be scheduled, word schedules there, right? So they're screaming at me, left or right. Uh, there will be one appointment per day for the next six days. And that's pretty much it. So now I want you to go back. And this is, what they're doing here is, this is the law that was originally written. Now the law is gonna be changed and that's what's gonna happen underneath. But when this law was originally written, it was the case that there would be appointment for six services. That means each of the six has been implicated, right? So you're reading textually. When you say appointments for six services will be scheduled, haven't you just said that each of the six must be scheduled? Yes. And that doesn't have to be the case. They can allow one, so here they're saying each of the six, and then you say, okay, one appointment per day for the next six days, got it. Okay, so that's the original law. Now what happens in all of this is the law's change, it's constrained. And it's constrained by these, these new amendments. So the first one here is water must be scheduled for an earlier day than landscaping. Okay, cool. Do you think somebody might be able to do this? Does that feel achievable? Talk to me. 
How much formal logic did you need to do that? Okay. Now what you're going to do is these are witnesses, right? And these two folks have come into your office and given you information. They are more valuable right now than the other four. So you're going to underline the W and you're going to underline the L. Because the law was, initially, they could go anywhere. Is it fair to say now that W cannot be the final appointment? And is it fair to say that L cannot now be the first appointment? And is it further fair to say that L can never be assigned to appointment in advance of W? And this is when you're thinking like a lawyer, would it be, think about assumptions, right? When they say W is uh, assigned earlier than L, having you now assume it will never be the case that L will be assigned before W. Yeah, yes. yeah and L will never be assigned before W. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that a question? Or? Yeah. yeah. Um, can you say that in like layman's terms, like for W and L? Okay, so you're saying that it's not going to, W is not going to be in place six because of the fact that it needs something else. Well, six is the last spot, right? Okay, right. And now we have this law, and this law says both W and L have to appear. Okay. And W has to appear before L. Okay. So if you put W in six, what would you do with that? There would be, right, so then, okay. Right, and you can't put L in one. And L, L can't be L in one, okay. And what they're doing, law school, one of the things about law school is it's not building a college. So what you're learning here, it, 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 it not going, it, it, it not another flight of stairs from college. It's a very different learning experience. And so to be successful in law school, you have to be able to learn new things. Analytical is learning a new thing. It's not a big deal. It's not point. Again, people are trying to make it appear to be something it's not. And it's not formal logic. Okay. So I look at that first constraint and say, no, no, I got it, I'm fine. I can, I can handle that. Next one. The power appointment must be scheduled for an earlier day than both the gas and the satellite. So P is earlier than G and S. Okay, can I, can I draw that? I think I can draw that. I think I can do this. P is earlier than G. That's why I would, again, you don't have to do it the way I do. So you can draw it whatever way makes sense. You just need to get the relationships correct. Uh, but there I have, what this says to me now is that, like that power appointment could not be the last appointment or the next to last appointment, right? Because there gotta be two appointments after it, right? So I'm gonna underline again now, but again, think about this is really what they're testing is can you create the derivative law? That's the big picture. The big picture is they give you the explicit law. That's the information about the code. Where these, guys, these folks could have been scheduled at any time. But now they change the law. And the changes require you to create the derivative law. So to do that, P, G, and S have now all come into my office, right? P, G, and S. So now I have data or information on five of these folks. And the data is not equal. In other words, the information I have on P is the most valuable, right? Because P's, P's telling me P would have to be first, second, third, or fourth, right? So I know that G and S, neither one of them can be first. And I know that L cannot be first, right? So there are only three of them that can actually be first right now, right? The only three that could be first would be W, P, and T. Do you see it? So this is the intelligence they measure. Okay, so, but I'm fine with this. What I'm saying here is, do I understand the constraints? I did. Next. The appointment scheduled for second, third, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the appointment scheduled for the second and third day cannot be gas, satellite, and telephone. So I'm gonna draw that, because now they've said second and third day. So I can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you say on the second and third day, I'm not gonna see uh, gas, satellite, or telephone. So here, 
second day, there's no gas, there's no satellite, there's no telephone, no gas, no satellite, no telephone. Underline my gas, my satellite, <coughs> and my telephone. And I just want to make sure now, uh, so, I've taken the third constraint, and I've made a visual. Nobody see what I've done. You said on the second and third day, you cannot have the gas with the satellite or the telephone, right? So again, let me know how much formal logic I've used. Not a game. It's the ability to, again, there's nothing in this test for me that rings so true uh, as somebody who's you know, worked on solving cases than this section. And the final thing here is the telephone appointment cannot be scheduled for the sixth day. Okay, so. Okay. trying to do now is create hypotheticals. So, so you take this information. Um, and what they want you to do now is this is a drawing part. Would it be fair to say, think of each letter and think of, because we're, we're, we have the opportunity now to, to breathe. Would it be fair to say with respect to the letter T, T would have to be first fourth or fifth. Do you guys see it? Yes. Okay, well this is what I want you to do during the week. This is the intelligence, right? If we, so if you were to write this out, right, and I'm not saying, but, but for the purposes now of really understanding of, of practice again, it's like we're out in the golf course for the first day, right? The swing here is organized mass. So, right? If I'm looking at T, I have one, or five. Now, but if I look at, because I'm looking at this, this, this S thing, right? But is it fair to say that, well now, is it fair to say that S cannot be here and cannot be here? Yes. yes. Is it also fair to say that S cannot be first? You see? So aren't there three possibilities with S? And you take your time. There's no right or wrong choice. I'll show you where it's leading. But S, does everybody see that S could be four, five, or six? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I see. It. Talk to me. Yes. 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 Okay. Now, isn't G in the same relationship with S? You see it. Mm -hmm. In other words, when we started, G could have been first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. S could have been, they all could have been first, second, third, because that was the original law, right? And what, they, what they're doing is they're mimic how the law actually works. And how the law actually works is law start out general statements, and then over time they're amended by the courts, they're amended by the legislators, they change, the laws change. And then you have to interpret, as an attorney, the new law. It's not the old law. And, and, and here it is. And you say, oh, OK. But what's going to assist me in interpreting? Well, what's going to assist me is I want to be able to draw something. All right? And to draw means I need to cut down the number of possibilities. So now I look at G, right? and G is in the identical situation that S is in. Right, G. she's got to be four, five, or six. When I look at the relationship between W and L, do you see I don't get as much help? Do you see how I don't get as much help on W? Right? I, I you know, 
If you were trying to build this visually on W, well, it kind of looks like W could be anywhere except less. Do you see that? Yes. So W is not the witness. Again, as I opened up the class, like on these links in the chain, right? It, this is just so straightforward. You, I bring in witnesses, and, and I'm aware of their relative importance to a case. Not all witnesses have to sink, make the same contribution to a case, right? So not these variables don't all make the same contribution. And I want the variable that makes the greatest contribution, right? Would it be clear to everybody here that if you were trying to visualize this, you'd have to create five hypotheticals on W, yeah. right? It could be first, second, third, fourth, or fifth, right? Talk to me. Yes. Okay. And you'd have to create five hypotheticals on L. Yeah. Right? L just can't be first, right? Okay. So the only thing I'm left then would be P, right? And you look at the P and say, well, what do I know about the P? Well, I know it's got to be in front of the G and the S, but you know what? That still leaves one, two, three, four, four. right? So imagine on the test, this is what they're measuring. Not, not would you put all this up, but uh, since G and S are both in the same area, they've, been, they've got to be four, five, and six, uh, I would organize this on T. Now you can organize this on G at four, five, and six and create three hypotheticals. You can organize this on S at 4, 5, and 6 and create three hypotheticals. Or you can organize this on T at 1, 4, and 5 and create three hypotheticals. And that's what they're testing for. And it never changes. And you're just going to get good at it. Just believe you're going to get good at it. And that has got, for the most part, nothing to do with formal logic. It's got to do with solving. And I've done that for a living. I actually know how to do that. And this stuff rocks. If you can get this down, uh, you can solve homicides. So, okay. So then I'm going to go here. Let me erase this so that everybody can see this. So the hypotheticals, you're going to, generally speaking, you're either going to bifurcate or trifurcate. Isn't that exciting? When you go home today, somebody says, what did you do? Just say, we were bifurcating. <laughs> and watch, watch them rush to try to figure out what the hell that was. They're legal terms. And bifurcate is you're doing two things at once. So I'm holding two hearings, but we're, we're doing it on one day. Bifurcation is to divide in half. Trifurcation is to take it three things at once. Right? So here, you're going to trifurcate on one of these three, and you do this like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. T is not visual in each of the three universes. Okay. Uh, so once I place the T, and I say, well, wait a minute, the, the, the G and the S both have to be, both have to appear in that band from four, five, and six, right? In other words, say you want to make that visual. Well, This top hypothetical, would it be fair to say that's the range of possibilities for G and S? In the top hypothetical, talk to me. I mean, they've got to be four, five, and six, right? 
and you want to make it visual. Okay. How about in the second hypothetical? Would it be fair to say G or S is going to have to be 5 and G or S is going to have to be 6? Talk to me. But do you see how the placement of one witness, in other words, the information you get from one witness, right, informs your case? So this has to be G or S. That's got to be S or G. And these letters are now visual. And how about in the bottom hypothetical? Where do you think G and S have to go? Four and six. Four and six. But now I'm looking at the letters. They're not like on the side. They're, oh, 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 oh. Which one is? And now what you do is you're crossing out the GDS because they're now visual. Okay. And now you have LP and W. And you say, well, this WL relationship has to be maintained, right? And I know that P's got to be in front of the G and the S. So stop, just stop. Again, this is where you need to have the presence of mind to have a plan, right? To say, no, 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 no. I've practiced it. They're not going to change a damn thing. I promise you, they're not going to. This is what they're testing for. The question is, will you spend as much time on the test doing it as we're doing it today? And if that's the case, you're not going to go to law school. But you're going to have to do it. So, did everybody get left? The three left, the W, L, and P, right? So, I'm going to look at the bottom hypothetical. Don't you have to maintain the relationship of W coming before L in slots one, two, and three? You guys see it? Yes. Yeah. And wouldn't it be fair to say that P just has to be in one, two, or three? Yeah. Then you go like this. That's it. This you have to manage, right? So if W is 2, L is 3. If W is 1, L is either 2 or 3. If you put P in, no matter, if you put P in anywhere, you, you, you now know where W and L have to go. Isn't that identical up here? This has to be W, L. P. And up here, you're going to have to do some managing. You, make, you need to maintain the relationships of W and L. Uh, and P has to be before both G and S, right? So you want to say, okay. So up here you have a little work. You have work to do up here a little bit. So up here I have W, L. Put it over here. And I have to make sure that I remember that P is coming before both G and S. So, to organize is to draw, right? To manage is to look at the derivative law. In other words, you take the constraint, you apply it to the original law, now you have the derivative law, right? So, the managing here is down here, there's almost no managing. You have to manage the position of W, L, and P. Okay, and S and G, right? Same thing here. Up here, there's managing to do, and this is very, very typical, very typical of what they do. For a statement, if they say something must be true, got to be true in all three. If they say something could be true, it only has to be true in one of the three. Uh, let's just see, and then what you want to do here is, does everybody see what I've done up to this point? Because we're, we're going to be doing this over, and you're going to see, it doesn't matter what hypothetical you're working on, this is what you're going to be doing. So does everybody see how we got here? So what we have done though, the big picture, what's not going to change, right? You'll never see this again. You'll never see the, you know, the six, whatever they are, right? Right. You will you will be tested on how to organize, manage, and solve on each of the work So what I want to do now is I want to make sure I didn't make a mistake. 
And so I want to identify an issue, because it's all IRAC, so I want to identify an issue where if I've created the law correctly, I should be able to answer it. And not all issues are equal. So, you know, if I look at uh, yeah, but, well, well, I'll look at number three. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm cherry picking an issue on the, on the, uh, on the likelihood, not, not an assumption, but on the likelihood that if you just say to me which of the following must be false, I should be able to answer that. Right? So you see how three just says which of the following, well, I'm sorry, it says which of the following must be true. Okay, I should be able to answer that. Okay. It doesn't give me any additional information. I should just be able to look at that and say, yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. Okay. A, must it be true, remember, it's got to be in all three, right? Must it be true that landscaping is earlier than the telephone? That's stupid. But you see, it's stupid, right? You just look up here and you say, but in one of these hypotheticals, the telephone was first. Stupid. And say stupid. B, must it be true that power is earlier than landscaping? No. If you understand this, you see no. And again, you could look at any of these. I'm just going wherever my eye takes me, right? But you see, power does not have to be earlier than landscaping. Talk to me. You see, it? this is not, I really, I'm, people overthink this stuff. And again, it's the culture out there that's trying to make it something that's not. This is just organized management stuff. It's nothing more, nothing less. Um, and uh, I, I could not do what I do without this skill. There's no two ways about it. C. Telephone, must it be true, telephone is earlier than gas? Well, no, right? This, this, that could either be S or G, you see? Is everybody getting this? Help. Yeah? Okay. Yes. So none of those things. D, must it be true that telephone is earlier than water? But it's stupid. I mean, I'm just looking at one of them, you know, but it's stupid. What is over there? So, uh, you know, if he's not the answer, my hair's going to grow back. E. Water is uh, scheduled earlier than gas. Yes. There's water, there's gas, there's water, there's gas. And up here, there's no way that water doesn't come before the gas, right? Because you've got to have the L coming after the water, right? Which we put the L over here. So that's the answer. You good? So what you're doing at home. And again, we're going to do a, a bunch of these. Right? But what you're doing at home is saying, okay, I'm going to practice how to organize. I'm going to think about how I, because you could have organized this on the G. You could have organized this on the S. There isn't like you have to pick one variable. It's just going to, it's going to be more efficient if you've identified the more powerful witness. It's just going to be more efficient. It's not essential, but it is more efficient. Um, so, does this at least initially make some sense? Yes. Well, aside from Sandra, does this initially make some sense? Yes. Talk to me. Come on. Yes. 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 All right. All right. Uh, then this is probably a good point to stretch, being at 1130 and all. Uh, when we come back, uh, say, Andrina will have a few words to say. So, that any questions you have about personal statements you should be thinking about? Uh, and uh, and then we will return to analytical for the remainder of the class. Okay.